Hey, welcome to Cheaper Jeeper TV. I'm Dino, your host. Glad to see you here. Some viewers were asking if there's going to be any more towing a trailer with your Jeep videos in the series on what to know before you tow. In particular, they were asking about the restoration of the lightweight Trillium travel trailer that I plan to tow behind my Jeep. I showed you a video on how to repair the hinges. I did a video on how to repair the belly band, as well as how to repair the floor. Well, before winter sets in, I think I'll do one more video, and that is how to install and seal a window in a fiberglass trailer. Stick around. One of the first things you have to do when you're taking the windows off an old Trillium travel trailer is get a screwdriver underneath these plastic screw coverings and pop these off. Sometimes these are gonna break when you try to take them off and they're faded over time. So you may wanna make sure that you pre-order some new ones. I have links in the description section of some sources. And once you have those plastic strips removed, you're gonna have screws filling these places here. We have holes right now because I've already taken them out, but you'll see there's rust because they didn't use stainless steel screws at the factory, but you'll replace them with stainless steel screws when you're done. So you just remove all the screws all the way around and use an X-Acto blade to break the seal of the butyl between the window flange and the trailer. And then you're gonna be ready to pull this window out. And it's a little tight and it's a little bit frustrating, but if you just work at it for a little bit, it'll come out. You remove the screws all the way around the perimeter on the outside, and then this window will just slide out that way. It won't come in this way because the flange on the outside will prevent that. This window is almost ready to be pulled out that way, but this handle is in the way. So what we have to use is a Phillips screwdriver to be able to unscrew the screw in the middle and remove this handle, after which point this window should be able to come out a little easier. Okay, now I have already taken this window out when I was doing repairs on the belly band, so it might come out easier for me. I'm first gonna try and take it out from the outside since I've already slipped it out once already. In fact, some of the wood from the framing is already down here. So, Let's take this out. So you can see some of the wood here in the frame right here and it doesn't look rotted at all, but the bottom one was rotted, and the top looks in good shape as well. Now, this side piece had been taken out, and so had the bottom piece right here. So I have to cut new pieces for those two locations, and I'm gonna use the two pieces that I took out as my templates. So here are the two pieces that were the worst in the frame that I thought I should replace. When you first look at it, it actually doesn't look too bad considering it's 45 years old. You can see the original glue with the insulite that I peeled away. But anyway, when I flip them over, I see that the holes where the screws were, were a little big from the rusting and the, and the moisture. And I thought what I could do is just put in some toothpicks with some wood glue to fill that up and reuse this. But when I looked at it, I just felt that it's three quarter inch plywood. I happen to have some around. The other pieces weren't bad at all. So I might as well just use some three quarter inch plywood and replace these pieces. Now some people use different products like cedar wood, composite wood, or they epoxy coat the wood. Um, I don't have any of that on hand. Plus this wood lasted 45 years. so. I'm thinking some fresh new three quarter inch plywood will do for another 45 years. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is cut pieces the exact same size and put bevels on them as you see on these original pieces and get started. Okay, so let's go. So the original bottom piece of the frame was two and a quarter inches wide and then the bevel is on the other side which we'll take care of later. Right now I need to get a piece of three quarter by two and a quarter inches wide 
and I'll determine the length after I get this piece cut. So the bevel on the board is a 45 degree angle. So we have to remove this plate so that the blade can have room to move and then just make the blade on a 45 degree angle. And then what you do is just put your board that had the original shape on it up against the blade and move your guard right up next to it. And that way, when I put the new piece through, I'll just slide it right through and get the 45 degree bevel. Okay, let's get started. So for the side piece, I just have to now make sure that I cut it to the appropriate length. Got the bevel, and you don't have to worry about it being so perfect because it's not furniture. This is going to be behind the insulate. Any imperfections will be hidden behind that. You just want to make sure that you have a nice quality piece of plywood with no other holes in it so that you can secure your window to this. And the bevel exists now to help run the end slide over it. There are other methods that people use. I've read about them in the forums, but for this time, I'm just gonna stick to the initial way that they installed it at the factory, given that it lasted 45 years. Now, with the longer bottom piece, there's also bevels on the ends. So what I have to do now is I'm gonna go get my chop saw to do 45 degree cuts on the ends of this long piece here. You got the best seat in the house. So this piece goes with the bevel facing that way because the end slide's gonna wrap up along here. And then I need to secure it right in this location right here. And then I'm gonna use some clamps to hold this wood in place with a couple beads of glue to hold this piece in place. And once the glue dries, I can then screw into it. Similarly, with this piece, the bevel goes down below and it fits in nicely there with the edge. So I'm just going to put some adhesive on these pieces of wood and clamp them in place. And once the glue dries, I'll be able to use my brand new stainless steel screws and screw the window back into place. Also with brand new butyl all around the perimeter of the flange to help keep it waterproof. Okay, so I've got some PL adhesive here that I'm going to put onto the pieces of wood and then I'm going to clamp them in place.
So now where the new wood is, I'm just gonna go put a very tiny pilot hole into each hole so that when I do the screws, they'll go in a little easier. My plan is now to go around the edge of the window on the fiberglass and use a blade on my oscillating tool to shave away some of the old caulking and butyl tape that's there because I want to have a nice smooth surface to which to apply the new butyl tape. So now I'm going to use Barkeeper's Friend to finish up with the cleaning and the polishing around the edge. got the window on the bench right now before putting the butyl tape on I just want to clean the mating surfaces because this is where I'm going to apply the butyl tape and then I'm going to mount the window up into the hole and then I have to put screws in from the outside to secure it to the wooden frame that we just put in now some people at this stage will polish the aluminum window and I'd like to do that and now that I know how to do this I'll probably do it when I got some time I'm a bit under a timeline right now so I'm just going to clean this up and then get it ready for reinstallation. Some of the butyl will just come off with your hands like this. Okay, so I've got the butyl tape just sitting out here in the sun getting warm. It's October, it's probably one of the few warm days left. So I'm glad to get this done. I'm in a bit of a time crunch here, so I'll be happy when this is done. And uh, depending on any comments or suggestions that any of you might make in the comment section, it'll dictate how I do the other windows in the spring. So I'm just going to do this one now. I had to remove this one because when I repaired the belly band, I had to access the rotted wood just above there. But they all need to get done. But this one has to be done given it was taken out. Okay, so the next step now is I'm going to run one strip of 3 quarter inch wide by 1 8 inch deep butyl tape around the whole perimeter of this flange of the aluminum window making sure to cover the holes right here. So let's get to it. It's nice and sticky so that's good. Now this is going to be the bottom so what I'm going to do is have, uh, I'll do the top one all the way across first. run it all the way from end to end across the top. Now I'll come on the underside of this top piece of butyl tape and come down this side. It's best for the butyl tape just to stick out from the edge a little bit. It's better that it sticks out of the edge than behind that outer edge. This way that edge when it gets pressed into the butyl it'll sink in and seal those holes and we're going to come all the way down right to the bottom here do the same on this side and with the two side pieces extending all the way to the bottom of the window the bottom piece will go from the inside of this piece of butyl to the inside of this Okay, the fastener of choice is gonna be one inch long stainless steel number eight pan head screws.
time to start putting in some screws. I'm just screwing them in till the butyl oozes out. Then after I go around everything, I'm gonna do it by hand so I can have a feel that I'm not gonna be putting so much torque on it that I'm gonna strip it out of the wood. see where each screw goes in that the butyl is oozing out so that's a good sign so once I finish this I'm gonna go back over it with a screwdriver with my hand and just hand tighten it being careful not to strip the wood underneath and then I'll wait a day and then I'll scrape off the excess butyl that has come out of the sides Okay, come on, have a look. You can see all the screws are put in along the top. You can see the beetle oozing out around the edge, which is nice. Being in the sun and all, it's definitely gonna help to make that beetle spread around. Well, I'm out of time for this video, but I am gonna explain to you the next few steps. I'm not sure that I'll be able to get them done before the weather changes. I'm gonna throw a tarp over the trailer in the meantime, and if I do get to the next steps, it's great. If I don't, I'll just have to do it in the spring. But these are the old screw guards, for example. They would go right here. Now, I mean, I was lucky I didn't break them when I took them off, but there's caulking on them, they faded. I'm just gonna go buy brand new ones. I like the black color as well. So you can get them in different colors. I think there's a beige and a gray as well. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do is just remove this excess butyl around the edge and then I'm going to snap on the screw covers and then I'm going to be applying caulking up this side across the top and down the other side. I just got to get this trim piece and screw it to the bottom of this window right here. There's a few holes there already there so that'll be pretty easy and then you got to take this window knob and screw it back on so I can operate the window and then tuck in the end slit around the edge and that'll be it. So the others are pretty much just the same. Maybe the front rock guard is a little extra step, but we'll see if I make those into a video or not. So it was a little nerve wracking being my first window that I've ever done. And actually once you do it and you see how hard and how not so hard some of the steps are, um, it's not so bad and I'm looking forward to doing another one. The only problem is we're in October. I think this is the last of the warm days in the next 10 day forecast. So I'm glad I at least was able to get this done. Let me know if you like this. If you have any tips, let me know because I probably won't be getting to the other windows till the spring. So your tips would really help. Now for some cheaper, jeeper tips. Well, in the tip segment, I just want to share with you that if you have a trailer, something like this, and you're storing it outside, it's always wise protect it by putting a cover around it. The one you see here, I'll have a link in the description section. It's breathable, it fits around the trailer nicely, and you can see a few lumps in the ceiling area because I installed some extra foam I had left over from some Amazon packages to ensure that there's some opportunity for air to flow around the trailer. And on the inside, I also have the roof supported with some two by fours so that when the snow starts piling up on top of the trailer, it doesn't put undue stress on the fiberglass. Hey, that's it for this week's episode of Cheaper Jeeper TV. I hope that you found it interesting. And if you did, how about giving the video a thumbs up? And if you're new to the channel, feel free to hit the subscribe button and the alert bell so you'll be notified when the next video is released. I'm Dino for Cheaper Jeeper TV. Till the next time, be well, stay safe, take care.